respected brothers and sisters in Islam. In few days, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will witness one of the greatest months. In few days, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will witness one of the pillars of Islam. That pillar, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Sawm Ramadan, fasting the month of Ramadan. And in Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, we all know that in Ramadan, there is Quran, there is Salah, there is Taraweeh, Qiyam, Dua, Dhikr. Everyone is trying his best. Some people are focusing in their fast, some people focusing in their prayers, some people focusing in their Qiyam and their link with Allah Almighty. Some people are so keen to finish the whole Quran in the month of Ramadan. And that's great. That's wonderful. And why we are doing all these things? Because Allah Almighty says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you may attain piety. So you may attain that taqwa. You will get this strong link with Allah Almighty end of the month or even during the month of Ramadan. So everyone knows, alhamdulillah, that in Ramadan you have to invest every single second of your time in ibadah. But in this khutbah, I will not talk about anything related to taqwa. Neither anything related to the reward and how you will gain reward because mashaAllah, nowadays you will find on your social media, you receive the messages on your WhatsApp and the pages on your Facebook and everything that somehow here and there the mashayikh, may Allah reward them, they are always reminding about these taqwa and how you gain this taqwa and how you maximize the level of your ibadah. But in this khutbah, my brothers and sisters, I would love to share with you things that we do or some of us might do and that will kill your reward. That will destroy your reward. So instead of gaining reward, you are killing your reward. You're wiping your reward. And these are many tips, but inshallah ta'ala, I'll focus on things that most of us, we are involved into it. So without taking long time, what of this, one of this one thing that will wipe and kill your reward is what? That is the TV, the television. In Ramadan. You will see, my brothers and sisters, that Allah Almighty in this month, the month of Ramadan, that in an authentic hadith it says that Allah Almighty chained all the shayateen, right? All the devils, the shayateen al-ins, they are tied up. But you will see in these programs and series and TVs, the most horrible and disgusted TV series is coming in Ramadan. You will see the most horrible and the concert and everything will not show except in Ramadan, will not pop up except in Ramadan. So yes, Allah Almighty tied up the shayateen al-ins, the shayateen of the devils, but yet the shayateen of shayateen al-jinn, they are tied up, but the shayateen al-ins, the shayateen of the mankind, the devils, they are working nine months, ten months, eleven months to bring the most filthiest thing in front of you in Ramadan. And I'm really surprised by people sitting and watching because, of course, Ramadan, you're fasting, no food, plenty of time. What to do? Sit in front of the TV and keep flipping the channels. And then you will see one horrible thing and another horrible thing and then another horrible drama and series and whatsoever. And no problem, you're sitting with your wife watching all these things. Barely people wearing clothes. People pretending that they are husband and wife. And you're just watching Adi. Maybe, you know, on your lap, your little daughter is sitting beside you. Maybe your son is sitting. Hadi, no problem. And by that hours and hours of spending just to wait until the Maghrib comes, you are wiping all your reward. So where is the gain of reward, my brothers and sisters? So be careful that yes, the shayateen, they are tied up, but the, the shayateen of men, they are there. They are working for you. So be careful, my brothers and sisters. Another thing, that will also take much of your reward, that is what? Al-Aswaq, the markets. 
And I'll be honest with you, my brother and sister, till today I have no logical reason to me, to myself, that what happened to the people in Ramadan? How come the markets are full after Salat al-Maghrib and after Salat al-Isha? That barely you will find place to walk, not to park your car. But subhanAllah, what's wrong with people? They're just going and walking and, and as, as there is no more shops before Ramadan and after Ramadan. And if you ask some of the people, why? Why are you just going? What's wrong? What, what's going on in the market? They will say, well, we are just going to walk. We're just going to kill the time. And this is more worse than if you're going to buy something. You know, in a hadith that is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, أَحَبُّ الْبِقَاعِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدُهَا وَأَبْغَضُ الْبِقَاعِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَسْوَاقُهَا That the most Beloved place in the sight of Allah Almighty is what? Is the masajid, is the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most hateful places in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Is the al-aswaq. Subhanallah. And while we are fasting, we go to the market. And you will find in the market what? What? A person is lying to sell his product. The other person, Allahu alam what he is doing. The one who wants to buy the product he is arguing and going back and forth and and arguing with the with the, with the person in the shop and subhanallah this lagat is going on and on i'm not saying that don't go to the market but if you have a haja if you have a need if you have something to go go buy and come why you have to spend a lot of time just to walk kill the time subhanallah allah almighty gave us all this time the age until we witness the month of Ramadan and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this person is loser who will witness Ramadan and the end of Ramadan is there and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is not forgive any of his sins SubhanAllah He's not been forgiven So Allah Almighty gave us this opportunity that you have to you have to get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in order to gain the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala not kill your reward from the other side, my brothers and sisters, there is one thing very important. We know that, alhamdulillah, we are living in a Muslim country. And in Muslim country, and even out of the Muslim country, in Ramadan, people have the habit to stay long in the night. Isn't the case? Or I'm saying something out of my own imagination. No, this is the fact. In Ramadan, subhanAllah, you will find people after taraweeh, alhamdulillah, they pray taraweeh. And then they will come and they sit in their majalis, in their majlis or in their diwani or what you call it in different places in, 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 in different countries. But this is the gathering, right? And in that gathering, what's happening? Slandering, backbiting, nothing is useful. And they will sit late until 12, 1, 2 o'clock, subhanAllah. And then they will sleep at 3 o'clock. And no way that they can get up for Fajr at 4 o'clock, right? And when you say, why brother you are doing this? Why are you staying till late? The simple answer is everyone will say, well everyone is doing it, subhanAllah. So your personality goes with everyone. Everyone is doing it, I will do it. Everyone is following it, I will follow it. And we shall we'll come to about the following everyone and following the majority in the second part of the khutbah. So this is very important, my brother and sister. Don't take an excuse that, alhamdulillah, we are living in a Muslim country, so the government will reduce two hours for me at work. So instead of working 10 hours, I'll work eight hours. Instead of working eight hours, I will work for six hours. So I have plenty of time to sleep. So if I sleep even at two o'clock, I don't have to go to work at eight. I might go at nine, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So I have plenty of time. How much time you wasted that you are not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that time. You almost, not almost, you miss Salatul Fajr. That is the faridah. It's something obligatory that Allah Almighty has written upon all of us. What you did to that. To that. So be careful, my brothers and sisters. These things will kill your reward in the month of Ramadan. And another point, very important, my brothers and sisters. Specifically, this point is for the sisters. Cooking in the month of Ramadan. Cooking in the month of Ramadan. Again, wallahi, I get surprised that when I see sisters, mothers, daughters, spending hours and hours in the kitchen, 
cooking one dish and another dish and then varieties of dishes and the sweets and whatsoever. Subhanallah. Personally, I know families. Personally. Wallahi, they get inside the kitchen after Salat al-Dhuhr at 1 o'clock. And they will not come out, out of the kitchen except before a few minutes of Salat al-Maghrib. Four hours, five hours in the kitchen. Why? And if you ask this sister, why are you doing this? Well, this is the demand of my husband. This is the demand of my family members. This is the demand of my sons and daughters. Subhanallah. This is the month of food. Don't you think that sisters, they might have desire to sit and read Quran? They want to have this strong relation with Allah Almighty in this month. They want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously. They want to spend more time on their rug, prayer rug. Why we have to keep demanding and demanding? Is it the month of food? Wallahi, personally, I heard that a person says, in Ramadan, last Ramadan, I gained five kilos. MashaAllah, good for you. SubhanAllah. Allah Almighty says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you may attain piety. He didn't say, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَسْمَنُونَ So you will, you will attain extra weight and kilos. And some other people will go to an ex ex extreme level by saying that I will in the Ramadan, inshallah, I have the aim to lose five to six kilos, to seven kilos, to eight kilos. Ramadan is not for that. Allah says very clearly, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the taqwa in this month. Have some mercy. On sisters, tell them that, okay, one dish only. If you have maids, tell them one to two dish, that's it. No varieties of food. Go back to the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the seerah it says that, you know, month after month after month passes and there is not a single flame at the home of Prophet Muhammad, the house of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the life of the Sahaba. Look at the life of, life, life of Tabi'een, the Khulafa. Check their wives, how many hours they used to spend in the kitchen, especially, especially in Ramadan. Subhanallah. Very important, my brothers and sisters. Have some mercy on your family members and tell them just make one or two dishes. In this month, I, I don't care. I want to gain reward from Allah Almighty with siyam and qiyam. And from the other side, my brothers and sisters, very important that if people not spending time on the TV that I just mentioned at the beginning, we are all spending time in the devices that we have in our pockets. Call it mobiles, devices, laptops, computer, whatsoever. And I know, wallahi brothers, they are spending hours and hours and hours sitting doing what? Just scrolling, like, comment, like, comment like comment wallahi this is what they are doing for last three hours subhanallah wallahi if you get give 1000 likes or 1000 hearts and 10,000 comments you will not get a single reward but if you op open the book of allah almighty and read half page one page two pages whatsoever that allah almighty made it easy for you to do for each letter allah almighty will give you 10 allahu akbar I know some people, they are doing da'wah work, you know, on, on social media and on the internet. But I say, stop even that da'wah work. I know people spend hours making this wonderful designing and putting the ayat and ahadith and the uh, aqwal salaf the sayings of the uh, pious people and whatsoever, then uploading it and whatsoever. This is good. But again, give time to yourself. Look at Imam Abu Hanifa, look at Imam Shafi'i, look at Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, these giants, ulama. When they used to sit and give the durus, the lessons, the classes, it says that, you know, hundreds of people in front of them. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahullah, it says thousands of people. So imagine he is sitting and thousands of people gaining knowledge from him. And spreading knowledge is one of the greatest things in Islam. When Ramadan comes, everyone stops. Wait, no durus, no classes, no courses anymore. Give me time, it's my time and Allah Almighty. It is me and the Quran, it is me and the dua, it is me and the salah, and that's all my brothers and sisters, that's it. Now compare, who is better? These a'imma or yourself or me? You cannot even compare, these are giants, these are the best people of their time and they are the best people compared to us. And they are stopping their... Drus and everything, the khair that they used to spread. 
every day, every night, but in Ramadan, no, I dedicate myself to Quran. It says Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and Shafi'i, they used to finish the whole Quran twice a day, 60 times in a month. Can you imagine? Subhanallah. This is the relation that they used to have with Allah Almighty in the month of Ramadan. And don't follow the opinion of the majority. Don't go with the flow. Because inshallah ta'ala, as I said, I will talk and I will mention about things that we think that everyone is doing it. Yalla, bismillah, go ahead, I'll do it. No. And my last point is for the sisters as well. My brothers and sisters, this month is the month of Al-Indibad, discipline. For all of us, but especially for the sisters. I know many of the sisters, mashallah, in Ramadan. When Ramadan comes, no makeup. When Ramadan comes, they wear ibayah, even though they are not wearing ibayah before Ramadan. When Ramadan comes, they have the good intention to wear the hijab. MashaAllah, if you carry on with this, Alhamdulillah, just continue. Don't do it only for Ramadan and stop. La. Carry on, Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed you and this shows that you have a good heart. You want to obey Allah Almighty, so you stopped makeup, you stopped sufur and tabarruj, you start wearing abaya and hijab. Continue, Bismillah. Ask Allah Almighty in this month, the month of Ramadan, Ya Allah, bless me. Ya Allah, bless me to continue. Give me that tawfiq so I can continue and get closer to you, Ya Allah. And very important as well, at ta'attur putting perfume specifically for the women. You will kill your reward. There is a scary hadith on that. Imagine even though if you are going to the masjid and putting perfume and passing through, you know, some people and they are smelling you, horrible statement that Prophet ﷺ said about that. So Alhamdulillah, this is the month of discipline. Try as much as possible to get closer to Allah Almighty, not to wipe whatever the reward that you gain from this thing or that thing or from the little bit of your salah or the dua or the Quran. Don't wipe, wipe, it, wipe it off because of the other things that you are doing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all to follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our life. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us so we can read the Quran and ponder upon the Quran and implement the ayat of the Quran in our life. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبيه المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه مقتدى وعلى أثر مقتدى Respected brothers and sisters in Islam As I said This is the trend Unfortunately that we are having nowadays That if you ask anyone Why you're doing that the simplest answer that you will get that everyone is doing it. And why are you following this? Because everyone is following it. Why are you buying this? Because everyone is buying it. Why are you going to that shop, mashallah? Because look how, how, look at the crowd at that shop. So everyone is going, let me go and just get into it and buy from whatever the product that they're selling, even though maybe you don't need it. So be, be careful with this statement. Check in the Quran, my brothers and sisters, that Allah Almighty says about أكثر الناس. If you look into the Quran, and if you just do this little bit of search, and find the word أكثر الناس, most of the people, what you will find, Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, أكثر الناس لا يشكرون. Many of the people, or most of the people, they are ungrateful to Allah Almighty. Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, أكثر الناس لا يعقلون or لا يعلمون the many of the people they do not know Allah Almighty says in Surah Yunus أكثر الناس لا يشكرون most of the people they are ungrateful to Allah Almighty Allah Almighty says in Surah Hud أكثر الناس لا يؤمنون most of the people they do not believe in Allah Almighty and Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan فأبى أكثر الناس most of the people they refused the حق so if you look into most of the people in Quran, it was nev never the positive point. Always Allah Almighty mentioning أكثر الناس, most of the people, they are ungrateful, they are disbeliever, they are refusing the haqq. And if you search in the Quran, my brothers and sisters, the word أكثرهم, the word majority, 
Right? This is the trend now it is. Majority are doing it. Bismillah, let's do it. Look what Allah Almighty says. Allah says in, in Surah Al-Imran, وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Most of them, majority of them, they are evil doers. Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-An'am, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرُهُمْ يَجْهَلُونَ Most of them, they are ignorant. Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Anbiya, بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْحَقِّ that most of them, majority of them, they do not know Al-Haq, they do not know the truth. فَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ So, they are turning away from the Haq. And Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Nahl, وَأَكْثُرُهُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Majority of them, they are disbelievers. Subhanallah. So, we should not go. This is the Muslim. We are talking to Muslim. We are talking to those who are having Iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we don't go with the flow. We just don't Go with the flow. You are a Muslim. You have this filtering system in yourself and in your mind that whatsoever you are doing, think that this will please Allah or this pleases Allah. If it pleases Allah, I will do it. If it displeases Allah, I will not do it. If it will benefit me and my family and whosoever in the community, I will do it. If this will not benefit me and my family and the community, I will not do it. This filtering system every single Muslim should have. And it's never the case that if you are among the few, you are the weird person. You are the stranger. You are the extremist. No, this is never the case. I'll conclude this khutbah with one story of Umar bin Khattab. He was doing tawaf, and he heard one of the companions, he sings, Allahumma j'alni min ibadika al-qaleel. Allahumma j'alni min ibadika al-qaleel. Means, oh Allah, make me among the few of your servants. Oh Allah, make me among the few of your servants. So Umar, at the end, he's a Umar. So he grabbed him. He said, Min ayna laka hada? From where you brought this dua? For him, it's a weird dua. What is this dua? Make me among the few. What do you mean, make me among the few? So Umar bin Khattab grabbed him and he said, From where you got this dua? So he says, From the Quran. He said, What? Where it says in the Quran? So he says, The Sahabi says, I read in the Quran that Allah Almighty says, Wa qalilun min ibadi ashakur. Only a few of my servants, they are the grateful. So I'm asking Allah to make me among the few. To make me among the few. So Umar bin Khattab released him and he started crying. And he's saying, Kullu nasi afqah minka ya Umar. Kullu nasi afqah. He started blaming himself. And this shows the righteousness of Umar bin Khattab. That always blame yourself for anything that you don't know. A person is better than you in ibadah. Blame yourself that, Ya Allah, I couldn't do it as this person is doing. If someone is reading Quran continuously, blame yourself that, Ya Allah, I'm not able to open and read the way he is doing. Always blame yourself. So Umar bin Khattab started blaming himself. Kull nasi afqah minka, Ya Umar. He's telling himself that everyone is better than you, Umar. Everyone understand better than you, Ya Umar. So it's never the case if you are among the few, but on haq, on the right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Isn't enough that Allah Almighty says in Surah Hud, وَمَا آمَنَا مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Talking about Nuh alayhi salam. He gave da'wah for 950 years, but how many people believed in him and followed him? Only few. Some of the ulama said only 80. Imagine, 950 years, the result is only 80 people following the haqq, but these 80 people, they will end up in Jannah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, to bless us, to follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our life, to apply the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our life. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to ponder upon the verses of the Qur'an and to apply the verses of the Qur'an in our life. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Allahumma a'izzal islam wal muslimin. Allahumma a'izzal islam wal muslimin. Allahumma a'izzal islam wal muslimin.